This is the IELTS listening test. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four parts. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to part one. Part one. You will hear the manager of a shop talking to a new employee called Penny. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5 on pages 2 and 3. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Come in. Good morning, it's... Uh... Oh, Penny Mon. Oh, yes. Penny, do sit down. Now, I know a lot of things emerged during your interview last week, but uh, I thought it was worth going over the essential stuff again. Yes, absolutely. That'll be very helpful. The first thing is that, given your interest in fashions, we've decided to put you in the dress department. Oh, that's great. Is that next to the children's section? Yes. Now, we've given the section a new name, actually. From next week, it's going to be called the Young Set. Young Star? No, uh, two words. The Young Set. Right. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> now, you'll be required to work a five-and-a-half-day week. Uh, we're closed on Wednesday afternoon and Sunday, of course. Do we get overtime for Saturday? Well, actually, we used to give an extra $2 an hour, but then we decided to make it a flat rate of $6.50 an hour. OK, fine. Um, and the actual hours? Nine to five, with an hour for lunch and 15-minute coffee breaks. And what about holidays? Well, it's three weeks in the first year, and that rises to four weeks in your third year with us. Now, we do give you on-the-job training, which we conduct during normal hours, so you'll be paid for that. Which day? It's on the first Tuesday of every month. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10 on page 3. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. Now, in addition to your basic pay, I should explain that you're entitled to some staff perks, which our assistants do find a valuable benefit. Do we get a discount? That's right. 25% off everything in the store. Although we do make an exception for sale goods, which I'm afraid have no discount. Yeah, fine. Um, and I was wondering about pension arrangements. Mm-hmm. You get a good company pension, which our personnel manager will be able to explain to you in detail. She's in room 12. Worth going along to see her. And who will I be working under? Mr. Appleby? 
The manager of your section is Mrs. Waddell. That's W-A-D-D-E-L-L. Mrs. Waddell. Okay. And apart from serving the customers, will I have any other duties? Good question. Uh, we do ask you to do the window dressing. Oh, I'll enjoy that. And one of the biggest worries in the boutique is shoplifters, so you have to check for them. Will I receive training on that? Yes, yeah, certainly. That'll be one of the sessions next month. Oh, and we'll be asking you to check stock. Right. Yes, of course. And is there a particular dress code in the shop? Right. Well, we're quite flexible. But what we do is ask you to wear a black skirt, and the shop will give you a red blouse. We'll also give you a name badge, which you must wear all the time. Yeah, of course. Right. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me? No, that's very comprehensive. Thank you. Good. So we'll see you on Monday. Yes. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. That is the end of part one. You now have one minute to check your answers to part one. Part 2 You will hear a tour of a newly renovated health club. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. As you listen to the first part of the talk, answer questions 11 to 15. Thank you all for coming to see the new renovations to the Hartford Health Club. I know you'll be as pleased as I am to see the wonderful results of our months of hard work to improve the club and bring you the best facilities ever. We'll begin in here with the swimming pool. You'll notice the new colour of the adult pool, a lovely cool green. Now walk over here and look at the children's pool. It's the same green, but as you see, with brightly coloured sea creatures painted everywhere. Both of the pools needed painting, not only for maintenance, but I think the new colour greatly improves the atmosphere of this part of the club. Next, let's take a look at the locker rooms. Don't worry, there's no one using them just now. Doesn't it feel roomy in here? We've expanded both the men's and women's locker rooms, so now they'll be much more comfortable to use. There are bigger lockers, a good deal more room in the dressing area, and more places to store extra towels and equipment. Be careful as you walk through here. The floor's just been polished and may be a bit slippery. Let's go up to the exercise room next. Here, you'll notice a new floor. Walk on it. Doesn't that feel comfortable? It's a special material, softer than the old floor, an ideal surface for jogging and exercising. They had to move all the exercise equipment out while they were working on the floor, but don't worry, it will be brought back in before the end of today. Let's step outside now and look at the tennis courts. We haven't done a great deal here except to the equipment. We replaced all the nets and the ball throwing machine, otherwise everything is the same as it was before. Let's walk down this hallway 
And here we are at the club store in its new location. We thought here by the entrance was a better place for it than where it used to be by the swimming pool. But it still has all the same items for sale. Sports equipment and clothes in the club colours. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. We're excited about the upcoming activities and events to take place in our newly renovated club. Now that the pools are ready for use again, swimming lessons will begin tomorrow for both adults and children. If you haven't signed up yet, you can stop by the office before you leave today and put your name on the list. If you're a tennis player, you'll be interested to hear about the tennis competition coming up on Wednesday. Players from different clubs all over the region will be participating. If you'd like to watch the event, tickets are available in the office. Also, I want to be sure you all know you're invited to our club party coming up next weekend. We're celebrating the completion of the renovation work and we have a lot to celebrate. The entire renovation project was finished in just nine months. That's three months less than the 12 months we'd originally planned on. We're proud of that and proud that we came in under budget too. Because we've had such good results with this project, we're already planning the next one. We already have two indoor pools, and next year we plan to install an outdoor pool right next to the tennis courts. Details of these plans will be made available to all club members soon. All right, I think we've covered just about everything. Are there any questions? That is the end of part two. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers to part two. Part 3 You will hear a conversation between two students, Maddie and John, who are planning a biology experiment. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. OK, John. We're studying the crabs on the local beaches, right? Yep. And we've got this form to fill in. So, our idea is that we find out if there's any impact from people using the beach. And the rubbish they leave. And there's other rubbish too, like from passing boats. Oh, right. So our experimental hypothesis is that people's use of the beach impacts on the crabs living in the sand. To include everything, we probably need to write down human activity. Fair enough. I agree. Okay, so what are we including as our variables? Of course, the first one has to be the overall number of visitors to the beach, right? Yeah. On the form, I'll call that visitor numbers. Okay. And then another one is time of day. Yeah. I think Mr. Ben said we need to look at the beach when it's busy in the daytime, when people are running around. Those four-wheel bikes are charging up and down, so the noise levels are really high. Yeah. And again at night when it's quiet. OK, fine. And I was wondering... What? What if some of the rubbish and food that people leave round is actually tasty for the crabs? Good thinking. 
So another variable is whether people actually feed the crabs without meaning to. How can we phrase that? Um, people feeding the crabs? No, that won't do. They're not doing it on purpose. How about、mm, food left on the beach? Yes. Okay. But can we make that shorter? How about edible rubbish? Yes. Good. So we need to have several beaches, don't we? You know, at least one that's hard for people to get to, that has almost no rubbish, and others with more visitors. Yes, that's right. Though, of course, there'll still be floating stuff from the sea on all the beaches and pollution from the passing boats, won't there? True. I guess we have to take those as constants. Well, we have three beaches to work with. The first one is the busy beach right in the town alongside the promenade. That'll be perfect for the high-use one. Right. Then there's the little bay around the corner that you can only reach on foot by going over the hill. So I guess not so many people visit that one. No, but some do. It's quite popular in summer for picnics. Yeah, so it gets a little use, but not that much. And do we have one where no one goes as a control? Well, Mr. Ben has asked a farmer to let us go across his land to another one the public never gets to. Ah,、oh, right. I remember. It's called Sandy Point, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions twenty-six to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-six to thirty. Okay, so what's our experimental method? How are we going to judge if the crabs are affected or not? And how can we measure three beaches with two observers? Don't worry about that. My younger brother will help us out. He's really keen. So we'll need to count the crabs, or at least their holes in the sand. During a particular time period, count how many we see. Yeah. Okay. So we need to be precise about the time,、uh, and surely we need to choose a specific part of the beach to measure. Yeah, that's right. So we need things to measure the time and the area with, right? What else do we need to think about? Well, to compare the beaches properly, we'll need to visit them all first, won't we? To see the lay of the land. Because we also need to set the identical distance from the actual water's edge for each beach, and of course that will change as the tide goes in and out. Let's see. We'll need measuring tapes and string and little posts to mark the area. Shall we say two square meters, three or maybe four meters from the water's edge? That should give us some leeway with the tide coming in. And to do it properly, we'll each have to be in position at the same time. So we'll all need mobile phones to synchronize the observation periods and stopwatches to time the observation precisely. So, one more question: How are we going to see them at night? And will we need to count holes again in the dark? Ah,、oh, that's two questions. Sorry. Yes. Well, we will need to count again each time. The holes come and go, apparently, as the crabs are quite mobile. They steal each other's homes too. So. If a larger intruder comes along, the previous owner digs himself another hole. As for the night vision problem, the department's got goggles for that. So what else? Well, we need to think about timing, don't we? Do we sit for an hour or two hours at a time? Let's say an hour for starters. Remember, we have to do this again after dusk. I've read that most crabs are nocturnal anyway. Yeah. So how many times do we need to repeat all this? For two weeks, do you reckon? Or longer. Well, that's twenty-eight hours total observation time. That'll make it harder for doing the stats, won't it? Yeah, that's true. So, how about we go for a fortnight, adding up to twenty hours in total? That'll allow for any bad weather. Yeah, sounds fine to me.
That is the end of part three. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers to part three. Part 4 You will hear a lecture about the black bear. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. The black bear, or Ursus americanus, has a wide range inhabiting forested areas of North America, including Canada, the United States, and parts of northern Mexico. Black bears are omnivores, getting their nutrition from a wide variety of plants and animals. The particular foods any one bear eats depends on what's available in the area where that bear lives, as well as on the season of the year. Generally speaking, plant foods make up 90% of the bear's diet. The rest of its meals consist of animal foods, such as insects and fish. Bears have a relatively long gestation period. Mating takes place in the spring or early summer, but bear cubs aren't born until the following winter. Usually, two cubs are born at a time, although some litters may have as many as five cubs. Bear cubs are dependent on their mother and may stay with her for close to two years. Wild black bears can live as long as 25 years. They've lived for as long as 30 years or more in captivity. Much of the black bear's range coincides with the range of its close cousin, the grizzly bear. Although these bears are somewhat similar in appearance and habits, it isn't difficult to tell the difference between them. Colour isn't necessarily a distinguishing characteristic, as both species of bears occur in a range of colours from almost blonde to dark brown or black. Many black bears, however, have a patch of fur on their chests that's lighter in colour than the rest of their fur. Grizzly bears don't have this patch. Size isn't always a distinguishing feature either, although grizzly bears are usually heavier with an average weight of 225 kilos. Black bears average 140 kilos in weight. Grizzly bears spend time digging in the ground for roots and tubers that make up part of their diet. The large muscles they need for this give them a distinct shoulder hump. This hump is absent in black bears, which don't do the same kind of digging. The shape of the face and ears is also different in each species of bear. Grizzly bears have a depression between the eyes and nose and short round ears. Black bears, on the other hand, have a straighter profile and longer, more pointed ears. Grizzly bears are known for their fearsome long, sharp claws. Black bears have shorter claws, which are better suited for climbing trees. That is the end of part four. 
You now have one minute to check your answers to part four. That is the end of the listening test. In the IELTS test, you would now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet.